Hello, this is Dr. Muhammad Adil Abdul Alti, a lecturer of Diagnostic Radiology, Cairo University. I will be explaining intestinal neoplasm radiological parents. Let me start with the learning objectives. Our objectives is to identify the imag imaging features of different small and large bowel neoplasms and the ideal modality to accurately diagnose and stage those neoplasms. I will start with small bowel neoplasms and I will classify them according to benign and malignant according to their pathological uh, findings. But first, I need to quickly uh, revise the imaging modalities we use. We can use CT abdomen pelvis, we can use barium follow through, CT enterography, and MR enterography if available. The preferred modality is CT enterography, but it depends on availability. For a small bowel benign lesions, we can start with the adenoma, which is most commonly in the duodenum, which is usually solitary, but can be multiple in polyposis syndromes. It's usually smaller than two centimeters, and there is a risk of malignant potential. It's usually a smooth outlined interluminal filling defect, as we can see in this image. And it's usually sessile and broad based. It, does, it doesn't has a, have a stalk. While if we go to hamartomas, hamartomas are most common in the jujunum followed by the ileum and duodenum. They have smaller risk of malignancies. They're usually multiple in pet struggle syndrome. We can see a small, smooth interluminal filling defect, as we can see, usually multiple, like here in the barium study multiple filling defects or enhancing on the CT if we can see this lesion, for instance, and it's occasionally lobulated and can cause obstruction. <clears throat> Moving to the lipomas, the lipomas usually arise submucosal and usually sessile, but can be pedunculated. More than 50% are asymptomatic. Large lesions can cause obstruction. There is no malignant potential. On barium study, they're usually sharply demarcated, as we can see it here, solitary sessile lesion, a filling defect. On CT, we can see its characteristic uh, fat attenuation, which is obvious in this case. And on MRI, we can see how the signal intensity usually goes with fat, which is high T1, high T2. Like this case, it's a jejunal lipoma, but this is CT image. <clears throat> Moving to benign guests, which is usually a unique mesenchymal tumor arising from the interstitial cells of Kajal, 40% arise in the small, small bowel, most commonly in the duodenum or jejunum. It tends to be smaller than five centimeters, well circumscribed, poorly enhancing lesion, as we can see there in this case. And it's usually exophytic, it's not into the human, as we can see in this image. It may contain calcification. Usually, uh, malignant guests are larger, but not usually that case. We will go, we will discuss malignant guests in a bit. For leiomyomas, it's a rare benign mesenchymal tumor, most frequently encountered in the jejunum. It can be enhancing, sometimes can have calcification or ulceration. When it's large and with adenopathy, it should be worry, worrisome of malignant lesion. Moving to malignant lesions like adenocarcinoma, it's the primary, the most common primary malignant small bowel tumor, most commonly in the proximal jejunum or the distal duodenum can cause luminal narrowing as we usually see it on fluoroscopy, like a apple core appearance, like mucosal thickening, ulceration, and infiltration, apple core lesion. On the CT, we usually see the enhancing soft tissue mass, the conferential neural thickening and luminal narrowing, vascular invasion, presence of lymph nodes, this the mets most often to the liver. We can find peritoneal mets, or we can see obstruction as in this case. We can see here in this case, how there's proximal obstruction to this uh, mid jejunal lesion. Moving to the lymphoma, which can be a primary source, like primary GIT lymphoma is the most common extranodal form of lymphoma, or it can be part of a widespread disease. More common in old males, most frequently in the ileum because of the abundant lymph nodes. We see different radiological features. The most characteristic is the pseudoaneurysmal, polypoidal lesion, which can be uh, within the lumen or endoexophytic stenosing and mesenteric. Usually it is associated with adenopsy and they can be bulky. We can see in this case, what is pseudoaneurysm, which is like the lumen is not narrowed, it's dilated like this case as well. We can see like the lumen is not narrowed and this, there's presence of lymph nodes. This should be worrisome of lymphoma. Moving to malignant cysts, which usually also has exophytic appearance, as we said in the lymphoma, but it's associated with necrosis. All guests are now considered potentially malignant and should be resected regardless of its size. But we, in, the, in the malignant features, it's a large exophytic lesion with heterogeneous enhancement and necrosis, but usually doesn't have lymph nodes. But we can find metastasis to the liver of peritoneum. Like in this case, it has peritoneal deposits. Moving to carcinoid tumor, which is mostly seen in the distal ileum, Michael's diverticulum appendix can be multifocal, usually with mesenteric metastasis, which we see characteristically is like a speculated mesenteric mass, like this case, with dysmoplasmic reaction. Not necessarily always we can see the primary lesion, which we can see it in this case clearly, a small interluminal filling defect. Uh, the, the mesenteric mass can have calcification, 
can cause obstruction or ischemia, and liver meds are usually avidly enhancing, which is common in carcinoid syndrome. Moving to metastasis, which can happen either hematogenously or directly, hematogenously like in breast cancer and melanoma, or directly like in colon cancer and ovarian cancer, usually CT can show you multiple polypoid intraluminal lesions causing luminal narrowing, and you, you usually find the primary somewhere else. Moving to colorectal cancer, in imaging, it's, we are more oriented with detection, staging, and follow-up. Follow up. For detection, we can use barium, anima, multi-slice CT, abdomen, pelvis, CT, colonography. While for staging, we can do multi-slice CT, abdomen, triphasic CT for liver deposits. Local staging of rectal cancer is best done with MRI. For recurrence and surveillance, we can use PET CT. Like for detection, we can see the apple core appearance, the classical typical apple core appearance we can see here on barium study, we can see here on CT, which is a constricting narrowing in the lumen. While we can sometimes see a polypoid lesion, like this case in CT colonography, we can see it here with the 3D rendering, volume rendering, we can see the lesion. Also staging using triphasing CT to, to assess the liver deposits, presence of peritoneal deposits, like in this case, or nodal and uh, lung metastasis in case of using PET CT. Local staging is best done with MRI, which can show you best tissue characterization in terms of uh, knowing differences between the mucosa, submucosa, presence of invasion into the mesorectal fascia, uh, sorry, beyond the, the, the muscularis into the mesorectal fascia, presence of invasion to an organ, peritoneal lesion. We can assess extramural vascular invasion, nodal involvement. Like in this case, this case was a patient with T3 lesion extending beyond the muscularis propria. Take home message, radiological modalities can help identify different small bowel eoplasms essential for the detection and staging and follow-up of colorectal cancer. Each imaging modality can offer a unique understanding of the disease burden, whether locally or distantly. Thank you so much for your time.